So, voice of cards. Hey, welcome back, everybody. We're playing this. Uh, everything's cards. Uh, when we left off, we needed to go to the doctor's house because of... I don't remember why. We'll find out in a second. I think we'd already talked to basically everyone else here. Yeah. Cy Pry and Ombre. Uh, I'm sorry. Cyprian Amber has lived here for many years, conducting research on monsters. Oh, that's fantastic. We we're We've been going for 45 seconds. And we already have the narrator mispronouncing a name. That's great. Also, what's on his freaking hat? What is that? That's just fur with teeth. But like weirdly human teeth. All the townsfolk affectionately call him Cipri. Yeah, that sounds easier than the other thing you said. If anyone knows anything about the dragon, it's him. He's a veritable monster. Oh, yeah, because we're asking about the dragon. We need information. Yes, we ask nothing. I mean, that's literally what we're here for. Which, you know... It makes me kind of curious to think about what happens if you just like, if you just sandbag the entire plot. I mean, if this is, this is sort of like D&D &D, um, inspired, right? Where you've got a game master and he's telling the story and he's reacting to your choices. So, like, what if we just don't play their campaign? I'll ask. I want to know. You ask Cipri if he knows anything about the dragon. He says he'll tell you if you do him a favor. Oh, here we go. The monsters stole a precious treasure from him. Let me guess. Is it in the West Cave that I couldn't get it go into without a torch earlier? If you reclaim the treasure, Cipri promises to tell you all he knows about the dragon. I mean, all right. It seems the treasure thieving monster makes its hideout in the Western cave. That's where you'll want to head. No particular surprises there. All right, did I buy a torch? Because if I didn't buy a torch, I need a torch. We did not. Can I afford a torch? Yes. Yeah. Rather easily. My torch plus or times one. That implies I would need more than one. Hey, 333 left. Yeah. That will be all. Yeah, totally. The, the the actual card card game is is fun. I like it. I can't say whether I can't say whether I prefer uh, I can't say whether I prefer simple rules or the more complicated ones, but because I've only played the one, but it's good. Adventures advised to be at least level three before entering. 
Yeah, we're good. Well, you can't reach the furthest depths of the cave. Maybe impossible to proceed without a torch. What will you do? We will use the torch. You like the torch. It'll be much easier to explore now with your surroundings better illuminated. This just... Like, I'm looking at this... Like... The dark vignetting around the sides, the cards on the table, the wood grain... And just like, all of this just kind of looks like inscription. Though the torch lights your immediate surroundings, you still cannot peer far into the distance. Fine. Oh! Okay! That's an interesting way to... to process that. Well, that was quick. What do we got? New enemies, maybe? Maybe new enemies. Yes! Very new enemies. Ow. You look like fire would hurt you. I was right. Nice work. Um, let's drop a heal because it's basically free. This isn't going to kill no matter what happens, so... Well, let's see. This is... Dealing damage directly will do 7. This could do 2 to 12. So it's basically even, even odds either way. Oh, or 8, I suppose. How? All right. Wait, no! Okay, that's fine. That girl is a crit machine right now. Oh? There we go. So now that I have a healing spell... Like, there's no reason why, for most fights, I can't come out of them with full life. Because it costs no long-term resource. It's completely free. Sure. About the enemy. Okay, bye. Oh, wow, that is a lot of stuff. He... The, uh... Oh, dear. Cards afflicted with poison take one to six points of damage at fixed intervals. One to six as in one D six. And also it cures after battle, right? Yes, okay. I was pretty sure we'd, we'd establish that. Yeah, the... The narrator didn't really stand out as like being familiar to me. But... I don't know, for lack of a better way to put it, like... He sounds... experienced. Like, this is far from his first credit, I'm sure. About the enemy. Hmm. 
You know, I didn't notice that tower in, actually. That's a good observation. Yeah, she's she's hitting crits more often than she's not. Wait. Yeah, that'll do. Vice in the original dub of Near Replicant. So Vice... Wait, is that the Japanese voice actor for this? Because if not, you're talking about Liam O'Brien. Yeah! Is it Liam O'Brien? It does kind of sound like Liam. He's, he's like putting on a... Okay, Japanese dub. That makes more sense. Medicine. Been on a bit of a binge. A message is carved into the ground. Never forget. <laughs> Never forget. Todd Haberkorn. Yeah, the name's not familiar. A bitter final missive from an adventurer done in by monsters, perhaps. Perhaps. Yeah, evidently. I, I'm not familiar with the name, but he's doing a good job. <laughs> I believe you! Oh, that's a good roll. Yeah, that's what we want. Yeah, we're supposed to be like level three before coming in here, and I think we're like five or six. God, what? What even are the Destiny 2 characters at this point? The only Destiny 2 characters I know are the ones that were also Destiny 1 characters. And even then, I've forgotten most of them. Also, we've got a new, we've got a new uh, enemy card story. Let's see what's up with Red Fungo. Red Fungo? Red Fungos are fiercely territorial, killing all who set foot on their land and turning the corpses into Red Fungo colonies. Forest creatures swell their fear their swelling ranks. See, try to tell you guys, fucking mushrooms. Mushrooms. This is this is what you're all like, mmm, how delicious. And they're like, mmm, how delicious. Forest dwellers so covet the red fungo as a health food that they leave monster carcasses in the forest and return to collect them once the fungos have colonized them. I hate it. That's really smart for like harvesting purposes, but no, stop it. No. Oh, we're level four. That's not as high as I thought we were. You're making a VTuber based on this. Well, I regret. I regret slightly speaking so negative of it, but I really don't. I really don't like. Mushrooms. Or decomposition. Don't hold back. I wasn't gonna. Now I feel really good about burning them. So we need to hit a three on that roll. Mm. 
we still need to hit a three on that roll because attack didn't go up. We're getting we're getting tanky though. I like that. I cannot believe that our our dumbass I only care about money, I never know the right thing to say main character anime pro tag is our prime like holding his holding his sword and his armor and his and his and his cloak in his or his mantle if you will in his character art is our primary healer those that's good level up them's good numbers Somehow she didn't learn anything. Give. Give. Oil pot. That's, add five to fire damage. Target takes for three. Oh, intro. Okay. I'm not going to remember to use that. Sounds really useful. I won't make it useful. Not going to be able to. the enemy. I wonder if... No. Huh. Wasn't expecting that. Hey, that should do it. Yeah, well... Well, yeah, now. Oh. You know what? That's a good point. When we, when we get to the mushroom boss, we can make it extra double super on fire. And that'll make me happy. Cave's not so bad. And fight. I'm assuming you don't care one whit about fire. I mean, yeah, it hits you. Ow. Now nah, we don't need that. Heal that back up. It's interesting that. The critical hits on some of these seem to act as, like, almost completely different attacks. Like, that heal does... That heal, it just heals, um... It heals 10 HP. But on crit... Uh-huh. Okay. Very nice. So on crit, that... Hmm... Maybe not there. It does, uh, it does five healing three times. Which basically is just like 150%, but I wonder if the cadence will actually matter. If there are things later where it's like, you know, do... If we equip something or, or something like that, or learn a skill where it's like heal, you know, one extra per per heal. And then it would be like instead of 11, it would be like six, six and six or something like that. I feel like ever since Destiny, like... Ever since Destiny realized that Peter Dinklage is uh, 
turn at playing the ghost fell like completely flat on its face. And they were like, oh yeah, that's right. Star power is cool, but voice acting is not acting and acting is not voice acting. Those are different skills. Maybe we should just get someone who's good at this. Also, Peter Dinklage obviously could not care less about this role. Oh no, now we can see the orc child enemy story. Time to get sad about all the orcs we're killing. Magic sphere. Fear containing magic unlike any of that wielded by humans. What is... Alright, first things first. Orc child. It actually reminds me. I, uh... I saw an old interview. I don't remember what it was on, like some entertainment program. They were interviewing Bob Hoskins. Um, Bob Hoskins, the now late Bob Hoskins, played uh, Mario in the Super Mario Brothers movie from 1993. And uh, he was talking about how he didn't know what Mario was when he took the role. So he didn't he didn't even realize after he took it until he told his kids and he's like, oh, yeah, that's from the video game. And he's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, Bob Hoskins, if you don't know, is a British actor. So he's he's like he's sitting there like he sounds like. Um, uh, oh, he's got the, that like South London accent, like uh, Michael Caine. So he's talking about it. He's like, yeah, my kids showed me this. You know, and I see this little thing jumping down and up and down on the screen. And they're like, yeah, that's you. And he's like. You know, I used to play King Lear. And he just kind of let that sit. And there's that moment of like, boy, I do not care about this. I can't believe like I went into like I wanted to be an actor to be to play respectable, you know, respectable roles to do Shakespeare, the theater. And now I'm Mario. Oh, wow. That. Good job, Mana. That, uh... Gen Z info hunting. Just... Just pulling up a... Why is this camera so low? Pulling stuff up in no time. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great bit. It's only like a minute or two long. But just like the flatness of him just delivering that line is like, I used to play King Lear. It's great. Listen carefully in any woodland, and you're bound to hear the methodical tap tapping of these little fellows' wooden mallets. Monsters consider them master craft orcs. Night after night, night after night, the orc children scour the corpses of the monsters they've killed, searching for the raw materials necessary to make their next instrument of death. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute.
Hold on, I gotta... I gotta do something real quick. It's Monster Hunter, but they're the monsters. Or, no, they're hunting the monsters. Yeah, that's it. I just gotta draw attention to something. It's important that I do this. Oh, this is different now. All right, well, anyway, I was gonna zoom on it, but I've got my scene set up differently than I used to, so apparently that's not as easy as I thought it would be. Regardless, that wasn't supposed to happen. Anyway, Remember the charity stream? Anyhow, look at the uh, look at the little brooch on his chest. It's not quite a meal, but it's almost a meal. Or, you know, Yokotaro himself. Okay. Uh, skills, items. Items, 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 items. Well, it doesn't go in as a usable item. Is it a key item? Are those just the... Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe that is what the guy wanted? I don't even remember. But if that's the case, what the hell's behind the door? Whoop. Hey, Ark. Welcome in. We're in a cave and we have a torch now. That's good. That's a good roll. We like that. I mean, it... Girl, it doesn't matter if we get good rolls if you just crit all the time anyway. I mean, I appreciate it, but, like, it kind of takes some of the punch out of getting a good roll. About the enemy. Although I suppose they're technically both good rolls. Getting a... Hitting a crit just means it was a good roll on another good... <clears throat> on another good roll. Yeah, we're kind of starting to just clown these things at this point, aren't we? I just wanted to see what it looked like. Completely unnecessary overkill, but it was fun. We've unlocked the Skull Soldier story. Ark, to catch you up on where we are right now, um, we went to the doctor's office. He was like, yeah, I know stuff about the dragon. I'll tell you. But first, you have to do something for me. Because that's how it'd be. So we're now in the Western Cave doing something for him, which I guess is finding that thing. 
And now we're reading information on Skeleton Warrior. Powerful curse clings to the bones of these former humans, which pry themselves from the grave in search of release. Dispel the curse to render them a pile of ordinary bones. There once was a couple consumed by an ill-fated love only to be reunited in undeath. So overjoyed were they at their good fortune that they both passed into a sweet eternal slump. That's not even... That's not even relevant! What you've told me is that, yeah, these are reanimated skeletons. They do skeleton things. Also, one time two skeletons fell in love and they both died again. Oh yeah, hey. Yeah. That's probably not going to be enough to kill. Is that enough to kill? No. Well, that wasn't even enough to hurt. Heal it anyway. No damage on my watch. Nice. Okay, we're gonna pass. Then we're gonna heal up that one damage again. We really are getting tanky. And then we're gonna just do a bump. Bump. discovered oh uh, uh 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 chat chat help i wasn't prepared to make this decision okay yeah fine That decision was actually far lower impact than I was expecting. I don't have a thing for curing paralysis, but I also haven't run into paralysis yet, so. Okay, bye. I also haven't, like, used an item. Well, I guess it's here now. Oh, come on! That was burn, hard. burn it harder! Look. The mushroom is literally stabbing people. And people want to tell me it's healthy. <laughs> that was actually kind of cute. Body slam doesn't actually make sense there. Given the difference between attack and defense, a regular attack would do nine. And I had to get a really good roll to do ten. 
Exactly, Mana. Exactly. Well, we've learned today. The door is shut tight. It seems some strange force keeps it barred. Upon closer examination of the door, you spot a cavity that looks like some sort of sphere should go there. Can... Can... Mm. But wasn't it supposed... Yes. You put the magic sphere in can we... the cavity and the door opens. Can we, like, take it back when we leave? It seems like we'd be able to do that. Treasure found. It's in this in spirit elixir. Oh shit. I guess. I appreciate you and generally consider you to have have like I I, re I respect your taste and I I think that you have good opinions on things but you're wrong though Love, you are also wrong, but I love you too. That'll work. Fine with me. Heal up. Okay, real talk, I generally dislike mushrooms, but I have learned that there are some that do not bother me as much because it's mostly a texture thing. Hi, I love you. That's what I was just gonna say. What are those called, like wood, woodier mushrooms? Yeah. Those ones are, like, it's not my favorite part of the ramen, but they're in there and I'll eat them because they're fine. I have also had some very, very good burgers that have mushrooms mixed into the meat. Um, a claret trail leads you deeper into the cave. Was the walking wounded a monster or a human? Yeah. A knot forms in your gut. You raise the torch to get a better look at your surroundings. The walls have been gouged and scarred as far as you can see. Another message comes into view, written in tiny letters among the scars. I will find you. Guys, we found Liam Neeson! point arc that might not be the rest that might not be all of the scribbles there may be more that was lucky mana no the long the thin long white ones i also hate those ones are also bad uh, woodier mushrooms are actually like brown to black. 
and I've only ever seen them in ramen. But in that capacity, they're acceptable. I'm okay with them. That might, that might work. Oh, well now it'll work, yeah. That's good, because I don't think it was actually gonna work otherwise. Good work. Hey Tom, how's your week been? I would like you to know that mine has been extremely busy and I have not played Wave Race. But I will at some point in the next day or two. Ooh. <laughs> That's funny. I am actually also totally fine with beans. But I will say I completely understand. Um, I completely understand a resistance to beans. Like, I, I understand why people would not like them. I think they're fine. I just realized this doesn't increase defense, it increases speed. So we're gonna give it on the slow character and see if he can't sneak in some turns. Uh, ahead of some enemies. That's a good time for Wave Race. Realistically, I could do the whole podcast this week having not act. Oh, shit. Having not actually played Wave Race myself this week. Because I have probably a couple of hundred hours logged into it from my childhood. So like, it wouldn't be a big deal, but you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it for real. Plus, plus do good roll strike damage. That's, I don't think that's gonna do it. Oh, it did. Really? Okay. Oh! No, make those. No, stop it. I'm going to save the game. No particular reason. Maybe, maybe, you know what? Let's save the game in a new, in a new slot. Yeah, that's good. This is fine. Okay. Everything was always ever okay. It's funny, Jesse and I were actually just before the stream talking about, uh, talking about the usage of like red bean and desserts. And how like, some people are really, really, some people are like really, really averse to that. I think it's fine. But I didn't like it at first. I think that a lot of people are like weirded out by its usage is like the assumption that you're supposed to find it as something sweet. But it's not really sweet in the same way that you would expect a sweet thing to be. Bonk. Oh, come on. They only get crits on overkill. 
Nice. Oh, finally attack power goes up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There is a there is a particular uh, a particularly Korean pastry that is really difficult to explain, but it is one of my favorite things on earth. Um, the the direct translation is always just called like glutinous rice donut. And it's, it usually has red bean filling in it, but it's essentially just like a little, a little like pastry ball. And it has a really, really chewy consistency, almost like, um, if you can imagine eating like mochi, but with a, but with like more of a pull, like more of a, even more chewy and what's even the what's even the texture? Almost kind of gelatinous in a way. Sometimes they're coated in like cinnamon sugar. Um, the texture, like the reason I'm having such a hard time describing the texture is because it's kind of not really like anything else that I've had. Um, I've had some like Brazilian things that are kind of close, but it's not quite the same. Let me see if I can find a picture. Jesse and I would get them in the morning at the uh, at the cafe and just like grab a couple for breakfast. They were just so good. There is actually a there's a, a baker a Korean bakery in town that makes them and they're actually quite decent it most of the Korean stuff that we get here is like still good but a step down from what you can get in the actual homeland but the red bean donuts actually pretty close oh yeah that's good that actually like that actually kind of shows the middle. Huh, I never knew that's what they were called. Chapshal donuts. If I what's the what's the best the best picture of them. I'm just going to send a recipe. I'm not actually like advising that anyone make them, but it does actually show pictures of what they look like throughout the throughout the process. So you can see like what's actually in them. This is important to me. I like these. I don't know if they're meant to be like a breakfast food or if they're more of like a dessert. But I mean, for Americans, the line between <laughs> the line separating dessert and breakfast doesn't really exist. Yeah, those are really good. If you ever see those anywhere, get them. They're excellent. The red bean is the easy part. It's the uh, the difficult thing to the difficult thing to describe is the actual like the actual outside, like the the rice flour pastry, spongy, like sort of gooey mochi type of. It, it's 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 really hard for me to, to for me to describe but it's it's like one of my favorite textures. It's one of my favorite everything. Anyway, thanks for coming to my Korean food test TED talk. Please try uh, chop shell donuts when you get the chance.
We got a new thing. Attack plus four water damage. Inflict freeze if roll is five or greater. Costs two stones. Oh, on a D10. No. No. Yeah, that'll work. Teller, I know what you're thinking of, and these are not those. Those are very different things. That is basic. Saved in a different slot. 